this huge house with all your friends. We have telephones, we have a car, your parents are gone, and you say so? Come on, Sarah, what's the first thing you think of? Party! Music! Night Trap is a fascinating game, one of the earliest movie games shot in live action, something at the time that was for the most part unexplored territory. It's full of cheese and odd design decisions. It gets into so bad it's good territory. It adds up to a charming and fascinating experience. There's not much to the game itself, but I'm glad to finally have given it a shot, a title I've heard about over the years. Plus, it's also notable for other reasons, like how it helped led to the creation of a ratings board, how it was one of the main targets of a United States Senate hearing in the early 1990s. This has played a large part in the enduring legacy of Night Trap. <laughs> A few things of note before diving in. Most of the footage here comes from the 25th anniversary edition released in 2017. In most ways, it's the best version. Clear picture quality, bonus materials, some quality of life tweaks. That said, there were issues with the audio at points. It could be a bit choppy. I looked up any kind of solutions and couldn't find anything for solving. So do bear with it. For comparisons, I'll also show some emulated footage of the original Sega CD version at points. You with me, Control? We're going in. In Night Trap, we are part of the Special Control Attack Team, or Sega Control Attack Team with the Sega version, aka SCAT. That got a chuckle out of me. If SCAT is something that tickles your fancy, please turn off the video and seek help. Get that shit off your chest, in a figurative sense, not a literal one. Back to Night Trap. A group of teenagers went missing from the Martin Winery estate. Investigating the house, SCAT discovered cameras and traps throughout. <laughs> Scat hijacked the line so we have full control over the system. The Martins have invited another group of teenagers for the night. This time we have one of our scat agents, Kelly, working undercover. She's posing as one of the teens visiting. Welcome to our little getaway. Father, I want you to meet Cindy. Hi. Ashley. Hi. Megan. Hey. Lisa. Hi. Her little brother, Danny. What's up? Kelly. Nice to meet you, Mr. Martin. Please, call me Victor. With the 25th anniversary edition, you could choose between several game layouts. These come from the various ports Night Trap had. You could change the camera icons to be classic or revamped. For classic, you don't see what's going on in a certain room unless you're viewing it. For revamped, you could see what's going on in other rooms at the same time with the feed at the bottom left corner. This makes the game a more seamless and easier experience. The difficulty isn't the focus here, and without this mode, the game does veer into frustration, trial and error. We receive notifications on screen when new enemies enter the fold. With classic on, you'll be clicking around to find out which room they're in to trap. Else with revamped, keeping an eye on the other rooms in the bottom left feed makes it a smoother process. I'm guessing this is what they had in mind in development, but the technology wasn't available at the time. Let's talk about these enemies we need to trap. These are augers, vampires that are seeking out blood to feed on. What are they? Why are they dressed like ninjas? Why are they hobbling around? The initial plan had ninjas as enemies as opposed to vampires. During development, the higher-ups at Hasbro, the publisher, put restrictions in place. One was to avoid what they called quote-unquote reproducible violence. Hence, no biting of people. Well, to a certain extent. The Marins will do so in some situations. Instead, the augers use this odd device around their necks to suck out the blood. Which in a way, ends up being more gruesome. If silly. For example, the game's most infamous scene is in the bathroom with Lisa. What I just saw. Those bloodsuckers just got Lisa and you had a chance to save her. We'll come back to this scene later. To keep our guests safe, we need to use these traps around the house. 
When augers are within range, our meter turns from green to red. Hit the button and voila. Some of these traps are pretty funny. I'm especially fond of the trap on the roof. At various points, the trap codes will change. We need to listen in to find out which color code to switch to. I love the obvious dubbing with the audio change as the color change is random. Now, Jeffrey, I want you to go downstairs and change the trap access code from blue to red. Don't worry, Mom. It's all in the fingers. Gotcha. I'd feel better if we switch the code again to green. We don't want anyone else to get control. It's more noticeable in the 25th anniversary edition with the sound quality difference. One thing that's noticeable right away is the time frame. Night Trap came out in October of 1992, yet looks way older than that. There's always that time frame around decade changes where the previous decade still lingers. That's not exactly the case here. They shot the footage for Night Trap back in mid-1987. Why is such a long gap between shooting and release? The initial plan for Night Trap was to release it on a console called Control Vision, a skunkworks project pitched to Hasbro that got the green light. A console that used VHS cassettes to play games using live action. Some cutting edge technology for the time. With the rise of the CD-ROM and expensive price point and large budgets, Hasbro would halt work on the Control Vision in 1988. Night Trap, along with Sewer Shark, another similar title, cost around four and a half million to make, an astronomical budget for the time. Tom Zito, who worked on the Control Vision, bought the rights to Night Trap and Sewer Shark and formed Digital Pictures. They were going to release Night Trap on the SNES. This is when Nintendo worked with Sony to produce a CD add-on for the SNES. This, of course, fell through. Around this time frame, Sega was prepping its launch for the Sega CD add-on, and Night Trap would finally see release in late 1992. The end result of Night Trap is this shot footage comes from five years before release. It has a sitcom feel to the way it's shot as opposed to a film. Part of it is due to the lighting. They want the game to be darker lit, but technology constraints force them to make it brighter. Fun fact, the director of photography, Don Burgess, would go on to be a DP on major Hollywood films, most notable Forrest Gump and the 2002 Spider-Man. A complete playthrough of Night Trap only takes around 25 minutes. Due to its nature, you won't be able to see everything in one playthrough. Many scenes happen at the same time in different rooms. Key scenes of the plot occur while you're out trapping augers. This promotes replayability to get the full story, although it can get repetitive. There's a checkpoint a little over halfway through. For examples of this frustration, let's start with the iconic Night Trap song scene. This song is an absolute banger. I found myself going, Night Trap! the next few days after playing. The thing is, during this scene, many augers are making their way around. If you haven't captured enough augers shortly after the song ends, you get game over a bit before the nine minute mark, which is pretty annoying. Look, it was your job to protect Kelly and the rest of those girls. But from what I've just seen, the place is being overrun. You've missed way too many of those suckers. Now, until you figure out how to do your job and do it right, you're dismissed. Breaking contact. Either cut back and forth through the song or let it play out in full and get the game over and start again. At least, this is the only game over you could get without having trapped enough augers. Afterward, game overs occur if you don't save the others at key moments. As Night Trap progresses, things are less spread out. There are fewer instances of several scenes playing out at once, especially once the girls learn about the augers. But at the beginning, there's so much going on here that you'll need several playthroughs to see. Like the parents before they leave the house for a stretch, the son and the cousin keeping things running, scat members making its way around this shit show in the background, 
For example, where does Danny, one of the girl's younger brothers, get this laser device to kill augers? Well, it's an easy to miss scene that Weird Eddie gives him the device. With the 25th anniversary edition, there is a theater mode where you can watch a clip so you've unlocked after. A welcome feature. There are a couple of gotcha moments. When a couple of augers grab one of the girls, activating the trap leads to her death. You have to wait for the opportunity to pass and trap them on the second opportunity. Or else you get dumped back to the checkpoint a few minutes back, which is pretty frustrating. Way to go, Control! I knew you could do it! There's not much to the gameplay, but what makes Night Trap such an amusing experience is the story and acting. They went for a B-movie or B-sitcom cheese when it comes to acting. Everyone knows how to ham it up and chew up the scenery. Combine that with the augers hobbling around and you have something memorable for how weird it is. On the note of acting, the late Dana Plato of Different Strokes fame is the most notable cast member. Now I'm part of a special control attack team, SCAT. We have the whole house surrounded. There's so much goofy stuff going on here. Beyond the Night Trap song scene and the deaths, you'll have a bunch of amusing dialogue and low-grade effects. You're not gonna trash your face with this junk on you. Megan, it could be a lot worse. Come on, look at this stuff. You know, they should test this stuff on Wrath before they let people like you play with it. Right, and how would they do that, Megan? With a little rat. See, first you put him in a chair with a clown. Ouch! Oh, no, Miss Lisa, that was too tight. Don't make me use this, Tony. Did you really think that this stupid little toy could protect you? One of these scat members steals the spotlight. One scene where, as he puts it, the old Jamaican number to check in on Kelly. But I was wondering if uh, maybe you had seen me board. Your uh, boat. Me board. <laughs> me board, ain't it a beauty? Built it myself. <laughs> now we can see. Uh, ah, look at all the pretty girls. Is everything all right here? Hey? <laughs> that is good, yeah. Or when the scat team breaks in to deal with the returning parents. Will you just take it nice and easy, folks? Because it's not been a good night for me, you dig? Vampires, you gotta be jabbing me. Let's cuff these freaks and drag them downtown. Hold it! Here's where everything comes to a conclusion. Catch the Martins and save Kelly. Oh, please. This can play out in several different ways. Ow! Ow! Ah! A closet trap! But it was going to be a surprise. Now! The wall trap! Ah! Yeah! No! In one case, one of them being one of the funniest quote unquote bad endings I've come across. Perfect! Nobody's ever done that! I knew I could count on you. Thanks. You are wonderful. And next time I'm on special assignment, I'm going to insist that you back me up. I'd go anywhere with you and feel secure knowing that you were at the controls. <laughs> nah, you wouldn't. And that's Night Trap. There's not much to it on the gameplay front, but it was an attempt at unexplored territory. It's memorable in the so bad it's good kind of way. One of the first major FMV movie games to emerge around this time frame. But that's not all to the story of Night Trap. It had an impact on the industry in a fascinating way. About two months ago, I saw the video game Night Trap for the first time. It is a sick, disgusting video game in my judgment. There's the drill. That's the guy with the drill. Yeah, that's the guy with the drill. We mustn't catch him or we don't see the no. gratuitous violence. In late 1993, U.S. Senators Joseph Lieberman and Herb Cole sponsored litigation to give the gaming industry a year to produce a credible uniform system to warn parents about violence in video games. During the hearings, Congress brought up several games. One of the main ones were Mortal Kombat and Night Trap. One of the reasons Night Trap was singled out was due to the live-action footage. Here's what Joseph Lieberman said about Night Trap. 
Now we'll the go second to the game is Night Trap, which is a game set in a sorority house. The object is to keep hooded men from hanging the young woman from a hook or drilling their necks with a tool designed to drain their blood. A sorority house? Nope. Hanging the young women from a hook? Nope. Drilling their necks with a tool to drain blood? That's better, Joseph. Their focus was on the violence against women and sexual violence. While women are the predominant targets here, several of the men can die as well in the same matter. And the sexual element? There was absolutely no sex. Sex? I mean, unless unless you're attracted to large, dark objects that go like this, there's there wasn't any. Wait, wait. Hey, you see where he she just bumped into? Good lord, it's gratuitous. The sex. It shouldn't come as a surprise that Joseph never played the game. At the end of the hearings, I walked up to Lieberman and I said to him, Senator, um, have you ever actually played this game? And he said, I don't have to, this is filth. Ah, uh, lawmakers and their understanding of technology. Some things never change. Remember what Senator Ted Stevens said about the internet? The internet is not something that you just dump something on. It's not a big truck. It's, it's a series of tubes. Or how about a few years back when Congress tried to grill Lizardman about his social media platform? What was the result of this hearing? Well, Night Trap saw a large spike in sales. Surprise, surprise. But the biggest change was the introduction of the Entertainment Software Ratings Board still exists to this day. There's a funny sound bit from Howard Lincoln, then president of Nintendo of America, on Night Trap. I want to state that Night Trap will never appear on a Nintendo system. Obviously, it would not pass our guidelines. Night Trap has sure been a fascinating game to check out. Through osmosis, I've learned plenty about it over the years. I've seen many clips out of context. Yet until now, I've never given the game a shot. Sure, there's not much to the gameplay, but that charm and cheese that oozes out of every pore makes up for it. Something so puzzling, so bizarre, and bad eats its own tail and becomes an enjoyable, memorable experience. If you cast the Senate hearing elements aside, you have a cult classic from the short-lived era of FMV movie games. Adding in the elements of the controversy, the game becomes so much more. One of those perfect examples to point to with how out of touch politicians are with the industry. Lawmakers full of old men and women know of their element. Sure, this was in the earlier days of the industry, but as much changed over the last 30 years, politicians still love to point their finger at video games in the wake of violence. Now, if they want to do something about loot boxes, that's fine with me. Thanks for watching. First, we don't call them loot boxes. I think that was whatever term you wish to apply yeah, to them. So, do so, you consider them ethical? So, what we look at as as surprise mechanics, 